Hi, this is going to be a brief training on how to use service agreements in My Service Pro and also in My Service Apprentice. But for the sake of terminology, we're going to refer to the product as My Service Pro. But know that it will also work if you have this feature enabled in My Service Apprentice as well. And with that said, I first want to explain a little bit what or just generally what service agreements do in my service pro I like to think of them as a scheduling tool because what it allows you to do is say that a particular customer or, or more specifically a specific job site or a specific site is going to need a work order created at some point in the future this may be one work order six months down the road. It may be a work order every six months for the next five years. I've even seen customers use it for monthly services, depending on the type of uh, uh, service industry. Uh, but I have seen customers use it for monthly work orders over the course of five or ten years. And it just makes the creation of those work orders actually it automates the creation of the work orders so what it does is I'm going to switch over to the dispatch board here with a when you have a service agreement for a particular site it is going to create the work orders uh, based on how you set up the agreement and then when those work orders are created it's going to put them in the bin or tab along the bottom of the dispatch board that says PM calls. But the reason we call it PM calls is it tends to be done for preventative maintenance. Now that doesn't mean you have to create preventative maintenance work orders on service agreements. They can be whatever you want them to do. I've seen customers use them as uh, work orders that are simply for the office staff to make a phone call. Uh, so the the call type of the work order might be something like schedule appointment or call to schedule. And then if the customer schedules, then they'll change the work order type to whatever might apply. So uh, this is where work orders that are automatically created by service agreements, this is where they're going to show up. And when the work order shows up here, all you need to do then is assign that work order. And I realize we're showing, uh, I was showing much older work orders there. So I sorted by uh, the date with the most recent date first. And then now here you can see uh, I have work orders that were created. These were all automatically created by service agreements. And then over here on the right hand column, or um, in the next to last column on the right, you can see whether it's been assigned or not. So that's just an overview of where we're going. So let me show you now how to set up a service agreement and um, get you going with that. Okay, so I'm at the the home screen in my Service Pro right now, and I've I've opened up uh, some other tabs here just to save some clicking around, uh, but I've opened up the customer, uh, a customer in this other tab along the top, and uh, in this particular customer there are three sites, and I'm going to, uh, just for this example, use that site. So in this site I have um, a bunch of old work orders, or a bunch of previous work orders, and you can see here I have a service agreement section. I'll scroll down here a little bit, and I have no service agreements. I do have some pieces of equipment here, and there's some service history and some more information down below there, but I don't need to go any further. Let's go ahead and uh, create a new service agreement. So I'll click on New, and we'll just start going uh, from the top down, left to right. Contract ID is whatever you want to, uh, really whatever you want to give it. So 
I'll just uh, make something up in this case. If you have a particular format you want to follow, you can go ahead and do that. Maybe you just want to do uh, customer last name um, followed by the date or something like that. So the start date of the agreement, I'll just do the current date. And when you click on that, a window will pop up. And I'll just say uh, the start date is that and maybe this is now this may not fit your business but just so I can show uh, some more examples I'll say we want to schedule um, quarterly work orders so every three months we want a work order to get created for this site and I want that to last for three years so I could pick the end date uh, of three years from today or three years from this date or I could just say well I want it to be 36 months so whichever you want to do I'll say 36 months do you want to apply a template you can create templates but for the case of this demonstration and this training I'm just going to say no so I'll set that to no the agreement type you, you can set up different agreement types and I just have some various ones in here uh, I'll just say I'll select a maintenance agreement I will show you where to put in those agreement types and then whatever equipment is listed under this particular job site is going to be listed here so if you want to choose which specific piece of equipment is covered you can do that so let's just say that this first thing uh, the Mr. Ice 110 is covered I'll select that and just click the little arrow and the top arrow there it'll move that piece of equipment over and let's just say by accident I also selected that other one well if I want to remove that I'll just select it over here on the right and then click that lower arrow arrow pointing to the left and that'll move it back so I've chosen what equipment I want covered and let's say I wanted everything added I could do that I could add everything from the list move it over here and if I want to remove everything and start over I could do that as well uh, what the heck I'll show you that so add all I could add everything remove all I could move everything off the list and then just select what I want so you can play around with that uh, when you're setting up an agreement and I'll, I'll say I would suggest setting up a test agreement or two or three or however many you need uh, as you're getting started with this um, and I think anything you would do here you can delete and if there's something that uh, you need help deleting just contact my service force support okay you can set up um, dates one at a time but in most cases you're probably going to have a recurring uh, a recurring agreement or a recurring work orders and like I said for this example this was going to be quarterly so I'll say this is going to be recurring and I want the work orders to be quarterly and okay what call type do I want well let's just say this is uh, preventative maintenance that'll be all your call types that you have and um, uh, maybe in your business I kind of alluded to this earlier maybe you just want to call the customer every month or every three months or whatever uh, to s see if they need service um, you could always choose a call type of um, call customer or um, call to schedule something like that but you can put in whatever you want and the start date this is going to be when you want the first work order to be created so let's say I want this first work order uh, to be for the beginning of the next month so I'll say 11 1 I could type in the date here which I'm doing or you could just click on the uh, the pop-up uh, calendar here and that opened up on another opened up on another monitor so I'll drag that over but when you click on that you could also choose the date now if the date doesn't quite make sense yet and why I chose November 1 and you might be thinking well 
how do I know the customer is going to want service on November 1st? Well, you don't, uh, but we'll go through that here in, in just a little bit. Okay, so I've said this is recurring. It's going to be quarterly. The call type for these work orders is going to be preventative maintenance. And the first work order I want to be for November 1st, 2016. I'll come over here, click on Add, and now you can see I have preventative maintenance work order for November 1st, 2016 then a preventative maintenance for February 1st, 2017, then the next uh, three months, May 1st, 2017, and so on and so on, down through for the duration of this particular agreement, which was 36 months. One thing I'll point out here is the reason I explain the service agreement piece as a scheduling tool, uh, it doesn't, it's not like you're tying a customer into a three year agreement. Uh, you can set it up that way if you want it to track your agreements, but uh, the customer doesn't necessarily need to have or, or have a signed agreement with you. Again, it's a tool for scheduling and not necessarily a way for tracking contracts or service agreements or service con contracts that you have with a particular customer. Okay, so these work orders have not yet been created. I'll explain what's going to happen. Before I do that, I go here in the, in the notes and these are any notes about the agreement. So these are notes that you would want uh, available uh, in the office if somebody looks up this work order, and I'm just going to type a quick note here. This would contain any notes that you would want to put in there. These would be available if you look at the agreement on the office side, and then these notes are going to be available to the technician in the field when they get an assignment for any of the work orders relating to this agreement. On the field device, there is a specific screen that says service agreements and on that screen is where they would see these notes that you enter here. And we do have a price field down here if you want to um, enter maybe the price per visit or the, the price per contract. This field is not used anywhere. It's not used uh, anywhere in any calculations within my service pro. Um, some customers leave this blank. Some customers will put in the cost of, of each visit. It really depends uh, on what you want it to have. So I'll just go ahead and put in $75 for now. So I'll go ahead and save this. And that's saved. And now you'll see under this site, under service agreements, I have a service agreement. So. I'm going to click on that agreement and go into it and in the upper portion here of the screen, service agreements, it gives me the details, the agreement ID, the site, start date, the end date, uh, the total price, uh, that's again the price we put in so I made this $75 per visit and that's just what I chose. You could make it whatever you want it to be whether it's zero or uh, 500 and then any notes. It'll show the equipment that we selected as covered and here we have all the work orders. So we can see there's all these call types of preventative maintenance that are going to be created. The call dates for each of those and then over here on the right hand side, the right hand column, it says TBD or to be determined. So what happens is um, these work orders are not created at the time the agreement is created. Each work order is created 30 days ahead of time. And the current date is actually October 5th, 2016. So you, you might quickly do the math and say, well, wait a second. November 1st is less than 30 days away. What happens is overnight, every night at about, oh, I think it's 
2 or 3 a.m. Eastern Time, there's a little program that runs on our server and says, are there any preventative maintenance, or I'm sorry, are there any service agreement work orders that need to be created? And if it sees any, it'll go ahead and create a work order and assign it the next available number. So what's going to happen is overnight, uh, tonight, this work order, the work order is going to get created for this work order with the call date of 11-1-2016. Going out into February, well, the work order for this um, this uh, scheduled work order for the agreement, that's going to be created uh, right around January 2nd, so 30 days um, uh, 30 days before February 1st. And when the work order is created, let me jump back to the dispatch board, when these work orders are created, again, like I said at the very beginning, they get placed into the PM calls bin. So again, when a work order for an agreement gets created and the creation happens 30 days before the call date, and the work order is placed into the PM calls bin. Now the date that it's given uh, for in, in that particular case, this was 11-1, so November 1, 2016. That's going to be the promised date of the work order. So this is the work order uh, that was just created for our agreement uh, just now. Let me jump back here. This is the agreement we just created. I'm going to refresh this screen. Just manually refreshing. And now you can see this call created the work order number 1765. So if I go over here to dispatch board, sure enough, there is work order 1765. I can look all the way over to the right. No assignments yet because it's a brand new work order. So let me go ahead and click on assign. So I have the work order, click on assign, and great, there we go. So I'll call the customer and maybe we can get out there on the 1st of November. Maybe they want it a little earlier, Maybe they want it a little later, but just for argument's sake, let's say it's the 1st of November. Great, we'll get somebody out there um, between 2 and 4. How's that sound? Customer says that's great, 2 to 4 p.m. Really, at this point, it's just a matter of doing a work order. Um, if you make changes to it, uh, go ahead and click on Save. And then once it's saved, now we just go ahead and make an assignment to the work order. Going back over here to the agreement itself, if you want to modify anything about this agreement, maybe you want to add some more work orders uh, or lengthen the, the time of the contract or change some notes, whatever you want to do, you can do that and make the changes and save it. And if you want to void an agreement, you can do that as well. So you create an agreement, you no longer want it, um, for whatever reason, click on void and that will get rid of it. And let's go back to this site. And here is the site showing all the information it had before and of course showing our agreement. Now I've changed to a different screen just to show you what a service agreement might look like after it's been used and all work orders created. You're just going to have a history of this agreement. Obviously, you'll have all the information up here and the notes, the equipment that was on it. And then it's going to show you um, the work orders, the call dates. So, so this will reflect the actual date you ended up uh, giving to the work order uh, as the promised date. And then it'll show the work order number. Uh, so if you ever you need to refer to an agreement, um, you can come back and, and uh, do it here uh, underneath the customer's site. And this may be helpful if you just want to reference a date quickly or uh, get a specific work order number. 
Uh, and then there's also, you see this renew button. If uh, an agreement expires and you want to renew it, you can just click renew. And then basically it'll pre-populate uh, some information about the agreement to save you some typing. And uh, you just have to re-enter uh, certain information and not start completely from scratch. One other thing I'll mention is, let me go back over here to the dispatch board. Like with any of your work orders, uh, if a work order is in a specific bin along the bottom of your dispatch board, it's not going to move from that bin or from that tab to another one until you change the status of the work order. So what I see a lot of customers do and, and you may be asking, well, at the start, why did you see, in fact, let me do this, why do all these work orders from 2004 and 2005 show up? And that's simply because the status of the work order was never changed. So in practice, this wouldn't really be good practice. Um, so once a work order is scheduled, uh, I would suggest taking the work order and giving the work order itself a status. And this can vary from customer to customer, uh, but maybe once it's on the board, you're going to change that to in progress. Uh, once it's done, then to change it to complete and then ultimately close it out. But I would suggest that once the work order is assigned, that you go ahead and change the status of the work order to something else so that you don't end up with hundreds or thousands of work orders over time being compiled inside the PM calls bin. As we were creating the service agreement, there were a couple things I mentioned. One was service agreement types. The other was service agreement templates. First, let's look at service agreement types, very similar to call types, but they're types specifically for service agreements. So you find that by going to more, then setup, then down to service agreement type. Click on that and that'll bring you to the service agreement type screen. So you do need service agreement types before you start creating agreements. So you want to make sure to come in here and create some agreement types. Start with one if you don't know what agreement types you're going to have. And as time goes on, if you find you need to add more, you can go ahead and add more. It's very straightforward. Click on new and create one. If you want to modify an existing one, do that. And if you want to delete one, select which one you want to delete and then click delete. It's just that simple. Uh, so I'll click on new here. It's just a matter of typing in a name, clicking save, and then you have your service agreement type. The second thing was service agreement templates. I'm not going to go into detail here on those. Some customers use them, some don't. Um, if you want to have agreements customized in some sort of way, uh, you can do that. So let me just show you um, by going into new, I'll create new. And you can see what you can add. So you can add the different equipment types that are going to be covered. Uh, so if it's um, maybe covering air conditioning systems or air handlers or what have you, you can pick those specific things. Uh, obviously, you would want to give it a, a template name and select what type of agreement it is. And then uh, select the different equipment types and move them over. And then maybe a certain type of agreement is always going to be, uh, it's always going to be uh, quarterly or always going to be semi-annually. Then you can select that. And then maybe you want these agreements to always have default notes that you would then fill in with certain information. So you could put in the bulk of the notes here and then you would only have to edit certain information every time you created the agreement. And same thing with the price. You could put in a default price as well. So that's just a, an overview of the service agreement templates. But the first thing you really need is the service agreement types, like I just showed you. And again, the service agreement types go up to more setup over here to service agreement type. And those would be your service agreement types.
And that's an overview of service agreements. If you have any questions, as always, let us know, either by using our chat online, uh, going to our website at www.myserviceforce.com, click on live chat, or email us at support at myserviceforce.com. Thanks.